What's up everyone, Cold Fusion here, and welcome back to The Witcher 3. Been a little while since I recorded uh, some videos on this, and to be honest, I'm going to probably put out another couple of videos, and then I'm going to take a bit of a break from doing videos and the like. Uh, just across like the Christmas break over December, mostly be doing a lot of personal stuff and, you know, just whatever. Okay, what's happening here? being attacked. <coughs> Alright, um, yeah. Uh, I'll probably just put a few videos out, or at least record some videos for this game. And then I will, um, I'll, I'll basically come back around like January, I reckon. Missing wife. Good people, take pity and hear my plea. My wife Hannah, she's missing. A few days ago she went into the woods and hasn't yet returned. I'm near out of wits with worry, out of my wits with worry, and we will pay any price to the man who brings her back to me, or at least tells me where to look for her. Neelan, Hunter from Blackbow. Okay. Uh, so yeah, anyway, last time we left off, we basically, we got information, well we found Yennefer, Yennefer again, to start us. Uh, and she gave us information that there is a contact, or a Nilfgaardian spy, who has information on the one we seek. So that's what we're going to do here. And first off, I know, yeah, there's a side quest here. What do you want? Rejoice, for even a creature as depraved and base in nature as you can serve the glory of the eternal Wow, fire. thanks. Someone <laughs> must see to the corpses on the battlefield. Necrophages defile those not already rotting in mass graves. This is not right. That's to be my good deed for the day. A handsomely profitable one, I might add. I know your kind don't work for free. All right. All right. I'll take care of it. This will count amongst your merits. The more good one works in life, the more hallowed things are. Yes, splendid. Here are the holy oils. Dash generously and set alight. Understood. I wish it to flare up to the sky, for the glory of the eternal fire and all that. Once I've incinerated the bodies, where will I find you? I shall be near the bridge to Novigrad. Alright. Uh, this is a pretty quick quest that we'll do through XP and all that. And it's on the way, so let's, let's do it, shall we? It's not like a whole lot happens during this quest though, so... Not, not anything story related anyway, so... It'd be kind of boring if you're just watching this to see me go through the story. There we go. Nice and crispy. Prevent disease from spreading. Move it. Well. 
liquid. Limit. It's been a while since I'm... Yeah, I do have necrophage oil. I'm about to say, it's been a while since I've played I've done this character. I haven't played The Witcher for a little bit, but I have, like... I've been playing on uh, other save files and stuff just to, um... Just, like, testing the game and all that. Uh, but I haven't, like... I just don't remember what's on this save, I suppose. Which is... Not very good, considering I'm trying to do an LP on it. I should probably know what I'm doing. Oh well. I think I explained already, but the, uh, the oils work in charges. Uh, if you apply a base oil to your sword, it will, um... It will give you 20 charges, which basically means 20 hits. Why did I get on the horse? <laughs> yeah, it gives you 20 hits, and uh, once those 20 hits are done, you have to reapply the oil. A bit, you know, it can get annoying in long fights, but... It's not like you'll ever run out of the oil. Once you've got the oil, it's in your inventory forever. Now for a shot of Igni. And you can also get weapons that are different from swords, at least in the steel category of weapons. And you can get axes and hatchets and stuff, but you can't apply oils to those. Which kind of sucks, I don't see why you couldn't. If you can't apply oils to them, I don't know what the point is having them in the game. Because they're just objectively inferior to having a steel sword in that regard. I don't want to see it like multiple times, but this game truly is gorgeous. The scenery is very pretty. I didn't mean to do that. Well, we're gonna have to reapply Necrophage Oil anyway. Let's get Quen up. That's good. Thanks, man. He's not even using a silver sword, and he's doing decent damage. If it ain't that fucking priest, it's corpse eaters. I'm done with this damn town. A priest? We'd agreed to meet as usual. Just a larger delivery. Good customer, I thought. Then they whipped out blades. We still talking about a priest of the eternal fire? I'd say so. Meat state pricks can't be trusted. This one had ordered premium grade fist tech from me three times, everything perfect. But the fourth, his man came at us with knives, sought to knock us out of the trade. Shut me in that ditch with the corpses. Must have thought the ghouls would take care of the rest. And to make sure, he hired a witcher to burn the bodies, destroy any evidence. A witcher? Meaning you? So what now? Nothing. Didn't pay me to burn the living. Oh, thank the gods it's true what they say. Though mutants, you live by a code. Oh, thank you, Witcher. I mean, I don't think Geralt would do it even if he was paid to burn the living. For a shot of Igni. Um, oh, maybe I have to get further away. Okay. Don't want to burn myself now, do I? 
All right, we've done. Let's return to the priest. We need that money. Money. And obviously he's a bit of a corrupt fucker, so we're going to have to deal with that as well. Yeah, I don't want to mess with these guys. Higher level than I am. <laughs> Calm down, folks. The bandits aren't going for you. Well, Witcher? Have you completed your task? Why do you priests take an interest in the fallen so late? The Church of the Eternal Fire's first duty is to the living. You've no notion of the work we did just after the battle. The wounded needed tending, refugees, pastoral care. We had sermons to deliver, donations to collect. Relieved to hear it. What would the people have done without you? So, took care of the graves. Interesting, actually. One of the corpses proved to be quite, well, alive. And pretty talkative. What do you mean? Fistech dealer. One of them survived. Had an awfully interesting story to tell. Hmm. Intriguing. I would purchase this story from you. For all time. Exclusively. Nah, man. Don't work like that. You can hire me, but you sure as hell can't buy me. Ah, an impasse. Then it will be cheapest to kill you. Three on one. Surely we'll manage, Witcher or not. Take him! I don't think you understand how witches operate, my boy. I'm closer. Oh, he's fucking dead. Come on, dude, try it again. Two hundred crowns. Nice, I will take it. Yeah, there's no reason not to do that side quest as soon as you have the chance. Uh, in the early game, especially if you're on higher difficulties, when you're gonna wanna like buy ingredients for oils and the like. Alright, let's take a look at the map. Yeah, see? It ends us here and we have a perfectly straight line to the objective, so we might as well just go there. Roach, come here. Dead. Roasted a dog. Must have been pretty darn hungry. Come out. I'm not gonna hurt you. When did you last eat? A week back. 
half a charred squirrel, and a handful of berries. How are you still alive? <laughs> I'm pretty sure humans can't live a week with, like... I'm pretty sure they can, like, barely live a week without food, and then they'll pretty much die soon after. Uh... I suppose giving us some food would be the best bet now. Because then they'd, if I gave him coin, they'd just have to go out and buy it, which is, you know, that'll take energy. Here, be sure to share it with the others. Thank you. Here, for you, for your kindness. Faster. I suppose that's all we could do. A beast, a bestiary injury. Okay, in beast's clothing, they entered his hut and began to search. First, they tore through his bed. Dried twigs covered the sheet. That was the first proof. For werewolves return at dawn after a night of hunting. Their bare feet covered in the forest's droppings. They found the second proof under his bed. A wolf's hide. The werewolf surely dressed himself in it when transforming with the setting sun, and shed it again when he turned to man the next day. Having found these powerful proofs, they ceased deliberation and began the hunt, vowing to find the lycanthrope and bind him in silver chains. And I believe that will give me information on werewolves. Which I suppose we might have another look at the beast here, see if there's anything new we can look at. Here we go, we have some information on werewolves. Okay. Ulfadin. Ulfadin? What's that? Some kind of fish? Professor Artibus Johans Rack, geographer, disappeared during a surveying expedition in Skellige. Ulfadin are a breed of werewolf, found ma mainly in Skellige. The harsh and barren conditions of the isles might explain why they primarily hunt men, and are stronger than their continental brethren. Older and particularly dangerous Ulfadin are called Vorefs. Only a few daring warriors in all of Skellige's history have managed to defeat an Ulfadin, and each of them is commemorated in ballads as a hero to this day. <laughs> like werewolves, Ulfadin and Vorefs are active at night, particularly when the moon is at its fullest. Fast, strong and amazingly resilient, these creatures kill with disturbing ease. Silver blades should be brought against them, as should Devil's Puffball. Take note that when near death, an Ulfadin becomes particularly dangerous and will attack with doubled fury, while calling on wolves to come to its rescue. Seems like it's with the moon dust, I wonder why that is. Maybe it stops its self-regeneration, perhaps? I think Devil's Puffball is like you know, flammable gas, I'm pretty sure. Makes sense, considering it has a lot of fur. <laughs> yeah, because it's weak to weak there. And they are a cursed being, so they require cursed oils. And then we have regular werewolves. Well, werewolves. Wolves aren't as bad as they're made out to be. Werewolves, though, they're every bit as bad and worse. Elsa Vilga, Archer. Werewolves are creatures with both men and wolves inside them. When in beastly form, they take the worst traits from each. The wolves drive to kill and hunger for raw flesh, and the men's cruel and calculated intelligence. A werewolf's condition comes about through a curse, and the transformations happen outside his conscious control. When he reverts to human form, he has no memory of his deeds, otherwise he would surely go mad and take his own life. Werewolves are active at night, particularly when the moon is full. Though they hunt alone, when threatened they will summon wolves to aid them. Werewolves rarely feel the need to flee, for few adversaries put up much of a fight against them. They strike as swiftly as lightning, with claws sharp as razors, and regenerate any damage received in mere moments. When fighting werewolves, a witcher should wield a blade covered in oil harmful to the cursed and have a large supply of Devil's Puffballs handy. A werewolf's curse can at times be lifted, yet there is no universal surefire method for doing this. 
A witcher seeking to undertake such a task must therefore equip himself with a great deal of patience and sturdy armour. Ah, rot fiends. So we just killed one of these. <coughs> Corset reeks. Think they're called rot fiends because they smell like roses? Vesemir, witcher of the wolf school. Rot fiends resemble decomposing human bodies that have been stripped of their skin. Their presence is given away by the overwhelming stench of the rot which gives them their name. Devourers are a particularly dangerous kind of rot fiend, marked by an insatiable appetite for human flesh. We have spectres. I guess it's just regular wraiths. Finish all your business before you die. Bid your loved ones farewell, write your will, apologise to those you wronged, otherwise you'll never truly leave this world. Paul Vicar, peasant healer, advice to a dying man. Clavics and scholars are forever debating whether spirits do in fact journey to another world after death, one where eternal joy or suffering awaits. Both groups agree, however, on what happens to spirits who for one reason or another, remain in our world after their body breathes its last. They transform into wraiths. To hear their mournful howls, one can surmise this is not a fate to be envied. Right. I just really like reading the bestiary stuff out. Extra lore is never bad. Okay. I don't think there's anything else to check, is there? Maybe there's extra information on characters. Uh, there is, I suppose. Could read through these, I guess. Alright. Buckle in, buckaroos. We have some lore to read. Let me just have a drink. Cyrilla. Cyrilla Fiona Ellen Rhiannon. What can I possibly say about her? That we call her Siri for short. That she was born in 1251. That she has ashen hair and a scar on her cheek. All true. And that's the Cyrilla I know best. The one I first laid eyes upon those many years ago. The one who seemed thoroughly, well, not ordinary, but certainly not as extraordinary as she in fact is. For Cyrilla is also a highly skilled witcher. Hair rest to several thrones, the last bearer of the Elder Blood, a powerful source endowed with exceptional magic talent, and a lady of time and space. Her hair colour and date of birth seem rather incidental, don't they? I can also tell you she is Geralt's adopted daughter, but that would be a gross simplification. Ciri is much more. She is his destiny, his unexpected child, someone bound to the Witcher by fate's most inextricably tangled fetters. Following age-old Witcher tradition, Geralt took Ciri to Kea Morn when she came into his care. There he and Vesemir taught her in the ways of the professional monster slayer. It was then that her magic talents were first revealed, and it's discovered she was a source. Ciri's gift provides a curse as well. Because of it, she would one day have to hide from the entire world, even Geralt. Ciri's biography contained one more great secret. Her natural father was none other than the Emperor of Nilfgaard, Emir Var Emrys. His words confirmed the fears swirling in Geralt's mind. Ciri had returned and was in mortal danger, for the unrelenting Wild Hunt was on her trail. Yennefer made it clear why the Wild Hunt wanted Ciri. Eredin wanted the power latent in her elder blood. She also let Geralt know that Ciri had been seen in war-ravaged Velen, as well as in Novigrad, the largest city in the world. Right. Dandelion. This is a character we'll meet at some point. I would wager anyone that you, dear reader, are a person of culture and taste, and therefore already familiar with me, Dandelion, and the role I am to play in the following tale. Nevertheless, allow me to sketch a few lines by way of self-portrait, for the sake of thoroughness, and in the event you have spent much of the last half century in some dark corner, where the light of my star is yet to reach. Born in 1229, a talented poet and troubadour, a graduate of Oxford Academy, a frequent performer at royal courts, 
and unequalled lover appreciated, and in some cases adored by ladies worldwide. A skilled negotiator and a stirring orator, such is the image of the bard Dandelion as painted by his friends and promoters. This image is, of course, somewhat over bright in its colouring. I personally prefer to think of myself as a dedicated artist, in thrall to his muse, one whose work has benefited immeasurably from the fact that I was, am and forever will remain a close friend and steadfast companion to the Witcher Geralt. It is his fear I chronicle in this present work, and his story which I shall sing till the end of my days. Amir Var Emrys Few names in the continent's history arouse as much terror and respect as that of Amir Var Emrys, Defwen Adan in Khan Ep Movud, the white flame dancing on the graves of his foes. Emperor of Nilfgaard, Lord of Matina, Ebbing and Gamera, Sovereign of Nazare and Vikovara. He was ruler of half the civilised world, an aspiring conqueror of the other half. He was a personage whose deeds and decisions shaped the fates of whole kingdoms and populations. What then could he possibly want of a simple witcher? The Emperor clearly and succinctly laid out what he wanted. His daughter in Geralt's ward, Cyrilla, was in great danger for the wild hunt was on her trail. Geralt, a superb tracker linked to Emir's daughter by the iron bonds of destiny, stood a better chance of finding her than anyone else in the world. Eskel All witches have a great deal in common, but with Eskel and Geralt, the similarities are particularly striking. They first met as two boys of the same age, swinging wooden swords at Kaomoran. Then they went through an ordeal together, the first round of selections, the murderous changes, the trial of the grasses and training on the gauntlet, the witch's daunting obstacle course. They also received hidings together for more than one act of childish delinquency. When they became adults, they walked the path separately, but still reconvened at Kaomora nearly every winter to wait out the cold, drink to their successors and remember fallen comrades. Though Eskel never gained Geralt's renown, he equalled the White Wolf in experience and carried out his contracts with care and efficiency. Death had almost taken him many times during his hunts, yet in an ironic twist, the hideous scar on his face came not from the monster's claw, but from the blade of Deirdre Adamain, his highly unpredictable, unexpected child. Geralt of Rivia Many cannot fathom the friendship Geralt of Rivia and I, Dandelion, have shared all these years. When we first began breaking bread together, spiteful tongues said he'd better off cutting my throat and dumping my body in a hollow tree, before I provoked someone else into doing the same for us both. Those individuals spoke out of pure jealousy, for Geralt was my dearest friend, a fact which he gave ample evidence of on numerous occasions. I could say a great deal about that world-famous monster hunter, the man known as, in elder speech as Gwynblade, or in our, our younger, yet no less noble tongue, as the White Wolf. <coughs> For Geralt of Rivia is a truly exceptional individual. A brief encounter might tempt one to label him a mere swinger of swords, a simple monster catcher, a rough and tumble practitioner of a dirty trade, but peer closer and you will soon discover he is a man of unplumbed depths unique views and vast world-spanning experience. On the surf he is introverted, tight-lipped, one might even say gruff, but underneath lies an overflowing sea of goodwill, good humour and an honest readiness to help his friends, be, be it with a bit of sound advice or the masterful application of his blade. Setting aside cumbersome false modesty, I can say that I know his story better than any man alive, I was with him through hard times and good, helping with wise advice, warm words and raise a wit. As a result, I am a vital part of his story, both in its earlier and present portions. It is thus my duty to continue my chronicle, and for the benefit of future generations, putting right in the next chapter of his deeds and exploits. <coughs> if you can't tell, it is uh, Dandelion that's doing all of this uh, writing on all the characters. And it's speaking from his perspective. Well, for characters he knows anyway. Unlike this guy whom he does not know. 
Hendrik, considering the way spy corps of all stripes tend to function, Hendrik was undoubtedly not this man's real name. Nevertheless, that was the only appellation the Witcher knew for his Imperial Majesty's nose to the ground in Valon. After asking around, Geralt learned that Hendrik lived in the village of Heverton. Lambert, the youngest among the Witchers of Caermoran, and perhaps the last ever trained within its walls, by the start of our tale, Lambert had proven his chops many times over, having hunted down many a mighty beast, and traversed nearly all the continent's realms several times over. Yet he had also developed a reputation for arrogance and sardonic humour, and his gruff and at times excessively blunt manner could irritate even his fellow witches of the School of the Wolf. Whatever his vices, it went without saying that Lambert would brave the fires of any hell for his companions. Morvran Vuris. Morvran Vuris, a commander of the Alba Division, an officer of the highest rank and a pure blooded aristocrat, one who with pride could call himself an elf guardian, a designation reserved only for native born inhabitants of the Empire's capital and its immediate surroundings. At the time of their first meeting, Geralt had no idea what an important person had been attacked had been assigned the task of asking him a few routine questions. Knowing the Witcher, however, knowledge of Morvan's rank and status would not have made much of a difference. Triss Merigold I always considered it a point of particular pride to count Triss Merigold and Maribor among my closest and dearest friends. This exceptionally talented sorceress was a shining star of her profession, the former mage advisor to King Faltest and a famous hero of the Battle of Sodom, known as the 14th of the Hill. Yet in no way did she resemble her often unbearably haughty sisters in magic. Her deft mind, warm smile and considerable personal charm have always won over even the hardest of hearts. Though my per personal relations with Triss never ventured beyond the fraternal, Geralt of Rivia at one point found her allure irresistible. From then on, the two shared feelings that ran far deeper than a superficial and fleeting fancy. Yennefer told Geralt that Triss had recently taken up residence in the free city of Novigrad. Vesemir Vesemir was the oldest living member of the Wolf School and most likely the oldest Witcher of any school on the continent. About as long in years as the ruins of Caermoran themselves, and though externally complaining about his creaky bones, this master of the Witcher trade gave no thought to a well-deserved retirement. Grey but still spry, he continued to ply the monster hunting trade into his golden years, effectively too, as he'd seen more beasts than all his students put together. A harsh and demanding instructor in Geralt's youth, over the years he had become something of an adoptive father and mentor to the other witches, always ready to help with sage advice and steady hands. In the spring of 1272, when our story begins, Vesemir had joined Geralt on his search for Yennefer, trekking with him through war-ravaged Tamiria. Yennefer of Vengerberg The Witcher first met the Raven-haired sorceress a good 20 years back. Their friendship and the feelings between them were born of a common adventure involving a genie and a wish granted to Geralt that intertwined their fates inextricably. In the time since then, their relationship had, however, been quite stormy. Rich in ups and downs, crises and breakups, Geralt and Yennefer's love provides irrefutable proof of the thesis that, the thesis that opposites attract. A few years ago, Geralt and Yennefer had, after a long separation full of adventures for them both, gotten back together again. Their moment of repose was interrupted by the Wild Hunt, which took Yennefer captive. The Witcher set out at once to save her, but lost his memory while doing so. When he finally recovered it, he immediately set off once more on his quest to find his beloved sorceress. The circumstances of Geralt's initial reunion with Yennefer after two years were quite different than he had imagined. The sorceress was not only safe and sound, but had even secured the aid of an unexpected and mighty ally, the Nilfgaardian Empire. And that's all we have. Well, that was, uh, a lot of reading. Right, so... What else we were doing? Okay, we're just... 
doing this. Right. Let's continue now. As I said in the description of this series, there's a lot of pedantry. And I will go on pretty big tangents. What the hell? Warning! Watch what you say, the trees have ears. Okay. I guess that's just uh, how the inn works. Seems like we've got Elvish here. Another warning. And I think that is uh, a contract. Missing Mikkel. My true born brother, Mikkel, is missing. Anyone who finds him, or at least finds out what fate has met him, will be generously rewarded. And I'll slip a good word to the Baron about you as well. You'll find me at the Inn at the Crossroads. Bruno. Okay. Let's talk to the innkeep. Looking for a man. Goes by Hendrik. What do you want with him? Want to talk to him. What about him? Give me a bottle of something strong. You gotta go. I'll open the back way for you. <laughs> Haven't finished my drink yet. In Cape Vodka. Who's this? Uh, brave warrior, looks like. Got two swords, see? Oi! Great boy! What's the point of having two swords? Wonder if he keeps an extra prick in his trousers, too. You fucking deaf! Gonna say who you are? Or do I need to loosen your tongue with me knife? Care for a drink? How about I buy everybody around? Why would you? Got the coin for it. Simple as that. I don't drink with strangers. When we share around, won't be strangers anymore. Then we go our separate ways. And which way might yours be? On my way to Novigrad. City of whores and whoremongers. To your health. And mine. Bottoms up. If you want to rest, come with me. On the bench you can use. I step in the hut, and there's the bumpkin with what looks like his son. That's on the pretty side, I think of himself. Oh, disguised his daughter. Thanks for not starting a row with those swine. I don't generally poke my nose in other people's business. Looking to stay the night? No. Hmm. I'm looking for Hendrik. Man lives in Heatherton. Don't know where that is. Other side of the hill. Looked that away this morning, saw a strange glow. Imperials on the raid, perhaps. But who knows? Anything else you can tell me about Hendrik? Odd fellow. Arrived from who knows where and for no apparent reason. Shacked up with a widow whose husband was stabbed for a scrap of bread. That sucks. Aaron's men don't like strangers. Aye, he stays out of their way. Always seems to know when they're coming. Always manages to disappear. Thanks, Inkeep. Alright. So that situation could have gone poor.
Uh, so okay. Fast. Okay, what well, you stuck on, homie? Here we are. Air is strange, like dropping into a deep cellar on a hot day. And the mist. Let's go. Whoever you is, get away. Calm down, it's over. Hi, it's over. All's past, never to be restored. I'll not forget that ever. Looking for a man named Hendrik, supposed to live in this village. Aye, he did. No longer. They nabbed him in that hut. If you'd have heard the cries, sir. If you'd have heard how a man can scream. How he can suffer. Tell me what happened here, step by step. They took him. Took him all. The sun was waning, see, and the dusk went crimson like blood. Thought to myself, strange, the tones, I cannot hear them. Then he begged. By the end, he could do naught but moan. Just wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, Geralt. Weren't here long, the terrors. Yet the village froze like in the heart of winter. You in that hut when they rode off? No. And I'll not set foot there. Never. Farewell. And peace of mind to you. <laughs> <laughs> Just wonderful. Alright, man. Not inappropriate at all. Wait, when did I get hit? I don't recall that at all. That's weird. Well, let's just heal up, I suppose. Well, he got fucked up. Tortured him. Maybe they missed something. Need to check his pockets. Trousers are stiff, as if hung out to dry midwinter. Maybe hid something in his jerkin. 
Damn, he's cold as ice. Nothing here. Should check his boots. Blood, congealed. Key hidden in his boot. Gotta fit a keyhole. Somewhere nearby, hopefully. There's a draft. Gotta be a space under this rubble. Guess I should do some cleaning. Ooh, a hundred and ten crowns. Left unlocked on display, almost. Lost his mind, or... Mm. Missing. Tamara Stranger. Daughter of the Bloody Baron. Presumed kidnapped. Hearty reward for whomever finds her or brings her in. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Secret compartment. Payment for a sack of grain. Amount due for a charcoal shipment. Hendrik was masquerading as a merchant. Mm, what's this? Notes among the ledger entries. Clever. Interesting headings. Missing and wanted. Subject appeared in Skellige. Also sighted in Novigrad. Appearance unchanged. Ashen hair. Scar on her face. Avoids contact with others. Drunken swine. So-called Baron hosted subject at his castle. Or should I say, illegally appropriated fort. Reason unknown. Talk to Baron at Crow's Perch. Clashed with a witch. Subject landed in swamp. Encountered a witch. Conflict ensued. Cause unknown. Find the witch. Talk to the peasantry. Village of Midcops. Caution advised. I'm being observed. Don't know by whom or why. Unsettling signs. Dog ran off. Water in bucket froze solid. Strange glow observed in the sky. Ill omen, peasants say. Somehow they learned Hendrik was looking for Siri. That's the torture. I'm too late. My only leads, the Baron, and some witch. Damn. Hmm. Well, we got all we can from here. Yeah, Hendrix notes is just what we read. Ah! Right. What quests do we have now? So I think, yeah, it branches off to two quests here. We can either search for the witch or go see the Baron. No, I think I would probably, I mean, I'd probably interject between both of them, but I know I would start off with doing the Baron first. Well, we can set off for, uh, for Crow's Perch now. Can I fight these guys? I could try doing it. Oh shit! I actually didn't hurt that bad though. It's kinda surprising. Fuck you. Jesus. 
Jesus. handled that rather poorly. I took a lot of damage. But fortunately, Gourmet is overpowered. And I'll just heal all that damage back. Another decoction page. Okay, I can probably sell the sword. Good here. Raj, fuck you. Stop running off. Let's go. Well, here we are at Crow's Purge. And now that we've arrived here, I think this is where I'm going to end this part. Uh, yeah, we uh, didn't do a whole, There's not a whole lot we did here. We mostly just started off the Velen quest lines. And obviously next time we will actually do something. Uh, but yeah, a bit of a... A bit shorter episode today. Regardless, this is where I'm going to end it. And I will uh, see you guys in the next part when we talk to the Baron and find out more information about Siri from him. So, see you guys next time. Peace.